sorry for the uh, the extra long delay after last week, but we got everything squared away and we're we're back with you guys. We're live from Boston, the European watch company Watch Cave. We are not in Geneva. No, unfortunately. But we're going to talk about what's going on in Geneva. Yeah, there's a little show going on yeah, right you now. May, you may have heard. Um, so two weeks ago, if you guys were with us, we talked about our predictions for Watches and Wonders, what everybody was going to come out with. And reliably, we were wrong about everything. I mean, you were wrong. I was not. I actually was far more right than you were, but that's okay. Yeah, no, I wasn't even. We're close. not gonna roll. We're not gonna roll back the tape. Wasn't to see even what we got, close. What we got right and no. got wrong. Um, but hey, yeah, I know the Masters is on, but we're uh, you know we're 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 choosing choosing to be with you people right now. So, um, but yeah, so we figured, why not? You know, we've all obviously just like you guys have been um, watching all the new releases coming out of Geneva. There have been some pretty pretty big hits, yeah. some pretty big misses in our in my opinion. Um, but we figured we would um, we'd kind of roll through them, chat about them, what we like, what we don't like. We really want to hear what you guys think. Um, let us know, you know, either on in the chat in um, on YouTube or on our Instagram feed. Um, keep us posted, <laughs> engage with us. Let us know what you guys think, and uh, we'll yell at each other about you know who's right, who's wrong. Yeah. Also, those of you watching on Instagram, uh, we have a laptop feed that we're going to be going into so that we can kind of put some of the new releases up on the screen. Uh, that will not be on the Instagram view. So if you haven't seen anything we're talking about and you want to see what we're talking about and you don't have the internet, which wouldn't make any sense, but <laughs> you could head over to YouTube to get that screen share as well. Um, Instagram feed, whoever has that, if we can jack up the volume. Um, we're using part of the issue, um, you know, uh, why we weren't around last week. We had some technical issues. We rebuilt our system. So we're, we're fine tuning everything again. So work with us. If you guys, if there's any you know, quality or sound issues, definitely let us know and we'll do our best to address them. So Adam, if you can try and jack up the, um, cool. the, the uh, Same volume. For those of you on YouTube watching, if you have any technical issues on that end, please do put that in the comments so we can take care of that. Yep. Um, All right, before we get going, let's have ourselves Oh yeah, a little a little sip of sunshine yeah. here. It's Which like is great dark and dreary again in Boston. It is the cloudiest, so. foggiest, haziest day <sighs> exactly. there ever was. So, cheers, my friend. And actually, you know what, Rob? I don't I don't think we can, you know, sipping some sunshine out of Pounders is great. And all, of but why don't we uh, why don't we get classy here? And uh, I thought you were gonna that's pull for out you, a, that's for uh, you, oh buddy. My. I was expecting like a screwdriver, here and we, we were just gonna do it. Here but we go. I guess we'll. Uh, so we're getting we'll go real, luxury. We're getting real classy here, friends. We'll go luxury. Hopefully you guys are uh, are also partaking, joining us on this lovely Thursday. Make it happy. That's me, uh, Adam, Mr. David. If you if anybody Let's would like a little That's bit. A beautiful color, right? They should serve beer there like this, go. right? There don't touch go. the bowl, right? Don't oh, touch man, the bowl. Don't heat up the the the, the <laughs> beverage, man. God damn, <laughs> working with heathens. All right, let's. Get, I usually just let's get in. Stand. Let's, let's uh, get into it, buddy. No fancy yeah, yeah, glass. yeah, yeah. Right, you're shotgunning <laughs> it. Um, all right, where do we want, where do we want to start? So I actually I heard uh, some interesting kind of thoughts from some people about this year's show in general um, because you know a lot of times we're used to some used to seeing some things that come out and really knock your socks off. Yeah. And you know uh, there was a little bit of that this year, but it seems like it's been kind of quieter. Yeah. And uh, more than one person has said they actually thought that the brands were looking at kind of the temperature of the market right now and mm -hmm. the fact that things are a little sleepier, a little slower, mm -hmm. and kind of tailored their releases, at least for right now. The other thing, too, is that these brands don't feel like they have to release everything now. Sure. It's not like Basel World 10 years ago where right. this was your shot, you had to shoot it, and you went on. Well, I mean, you look at the brands um, that aren't even at... Watches and Wonders, AP, right. AP, AP isn't already there. Released. They already released. You know that it's like you're saying. It's it's not the be all and end all anymore. Yeah. And stuff does come out before, after. Right. Um, I will and this say, first quarter, uh, economically overall, has been quiet. Yeah, but I mean, I will say that you know these brands are they're they're not planning three months ago for their releases in in April at Watches yeah. and Wonders. This this has been in the works for 12, 24, sometimes thirty six right. months for oh, yeah. for for twenty twenty four releases. Yeah. So I don't think they're I don't think they're holding things and not releasing them, you know, because you know things are a little bit sleepy right now. But yeah. but you're, I, I, I mean, but, but you're though, not the only that... one. So I mean, a, a lot of people, you know, we asked for you know what you guys thought about the releases um, on Instagram, and there were 
more than just a few of you know boring like you know we asked who 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 do we who do you guys think won or is is winning right now and a lot of people said my wallet because nothing is appealing so you know there's you guys you're not alone you know people may have been a little bit underwhelmed with this year's releases but i do still think that there are some gems that 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 you know did hit the market um and oh, that yeah. are impressive and, and yeah. are and are worth talking about for yeah. sure the other thing too is like I'm always curious, those of you who are saying that it is a boring show or that there's nothing really noteworthy, what did you want to see? What were you looking for? You know, it's, I can't imagine trying to be a designer at one of these brands and trying to come up with something new or a new iteration because obviously like, you know, you think about when like Longa came out with the Zeitwerk yeah. or um like paddock coming out with the inline perpetual mm -hmm. right where they've done a whole new caliber a whole kind of new watch case the whole thing that's got to be what a five-year project at least yeah right I mean, it's all so, been done it's all been done you know and like you're saying it takes so long to develop any kind of new yeah. caliber any kind of new complication um it's not it's not a simple process right and you have to really think about your brand and where it's coming from and right things. right so update to explorer two they just did that with the 226570. Um, I don't think we're going to see like a new, new Explorer 2 for a few years. All right, we're not talking about predictions. We're not anyway. talking about what didn't happen. Let's talk True. about what we should actually talk about what happened. happened. Where do we want to start? Do you want to start with the, the elephant in every single room? The crown? The crown, the, the coronet. Crown. I mean, Hans they, Wilsdorf himself. They definitely get the most coverage. Yeah. They had the most. Uh, Let's go there. Let's go there. Yeah. So we're going to talk about Rolex to start. Let us know in the comments what you guys think about, uh, you know, what the crown released this year. Obviously, the big one, no pun intended, is the all yellow gold deep sea sea dweller. Um, it's you couldn't have missed it. It's an absolute monster. It's not a sea dweller. Anymore. Sorry, it's just it's, a deep it's sea. It's not a sea it's dweller. Not it is now technically just not. the deep sea. Right. Um, which I wonder if that's going to transition to the steel as well. Um, I will pull this up and put this in the wrist cam here so you guys can kind of see what this current dial looks like. So oh, let me move the hands a little bit differently. So this is one of those people like to rip on Rolex for like having a novel's worth of information <laughs> on the watch. And this one here Rolex is no not exception. Not cooperative with me right now. Technology problems? No, yeah. it's the, I was just trying to get the Rolex website so pulled up. So on this watch, working. we've got Rolex, Oyster Perpetual Date, we've got Deep Sea, and then below that, you've got Sea Dweller, you've got the depth ratings, and then Superlative Chronometer officially certified. So they cleaned up this dial a little bit because now it just says Deep Sea. They got rid of the Sea Dweller line, which I think is nice. But So I'm here holding an old one. This is a 11660, so this is like the original reference. And this isn't even the fat bracelet, right? This is the skinnier bracelet on this one. And this is a heavy watch. I'm sure a lot of you have had this watch on your wrist before. It actually, I, I have to admit, it wears better than you would imagine, especially for somebody like me who wears 36 millimeter pieces most of the time. Like, it's not as cumbersome as you would think when it's sized correctly. Um, I wore one for a day and I got used to it real fast. So it works, but... This in gold, holy cow. Yeah, so David, if you want to go to my, go to the, the laptop feed, and again, guys, on Instagram, sorry, you're not going to see this, but um, we're just pulling up some images of the, uh, you know, of the new pieces because we don't obviously have them in person yet. So, you know, look at this. It's ridiculous. And you know what's interesting, which I didn't realize? So that, that blue dial, it's, it's actually a lacquer dial. So you're going to have some really, really nice depth. I, yeah, I, oh, make it full screen. Sorry, people, let's see. Oh, yeah. Well, you still see my tabs, but good thing I don't have any porn open. There you go. Um, here you go. That's on the Rolex website. Um, I didn't know that. Blue lacquer. Yeah, blue, la blue lacquer dial. It's, you know, it's a monster. I mean, it's, 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 it's a deep sea that is full yellow gold. Yeah. This is going to weigh an absolute The case back's titanium, The case back is titanium. Though, so it'll, is titanium. Be, it'll be downright felt. Shaving those, uh, those, the, those couple of micrograms, I guess. But, I mean, whatever. It's, <coughs> I, I love that Rolex is doing this. It's, it's... It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. Like, there's no point to have a all yellow gold, you know, tool watch like this. No one's gonna go, you know, saturation diving wearing this, except for maybe a couple of our clients who mm. uh, I hope they do. <laughs> that I mean, I could see it. Wasn't there? There is a diver. Ah, oh, one of our 
colleagues was telling me, I'm going to get to these comments in a sec yeah, second. Yeah, I see them all there. Uh, one of our colleagues was telling us there was a, a like a professional diver who used to wear a gold sub, like a 16808 or something like that. Well, apparently, he had issues with like piranhas or something going after oh, shiny funny. objects. I yeah, mean, Sylvia Earle dangerous. is known for she wears a gold datejust on her on her dives, like that's, that's sick. which is ridiculous. That's so cool. I just wanna, <laughs> watch medicine said watches and wonders, more like watches and blunders. Oh, <laughs> burn! Yeah, right. We need a rim shot, real quick. All right, scroll All right, anyways, me a little bit, David. On, I want to I want to talk to the people. Go ahead. Ahead, scroll it down. Uh, somebody asking about the Omega Centenary Museum piece. We don't not, have not that on that. the desk because we tried to pull things that relate to watches and wonders for this week. Uh, the pressure to create novelties every year is just ridiculous. There is probably a lot of uh, there's a lot of expectation. It's yeah. really hard. I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. Yeah, That's I mean, all but I'm it's it's say. really you know it's it's just like the modern car market. You know it's. Anything. It's just it, yeah, it's anything. capitalism. Like welcome, welcome to yeah. you know, welcome to the world well, in twenty twenty four. It's capitalism in a world that moves faster than anything else, right? right? Because of phones and things like that. Like right. think about the old days, waiting to see these releases from Basel World back then. Whereas in now, five minutes after it's there, it's all over. Yeah, Instagram. or a little before. So, and then I was going to say, Tim Homan, Deep Sea Challenge is still alive, and and that was one thing we wanted to talk about as well. Is yeah. that you know, actually two weeks ago for our prediction show, we were talking about discontinued, you know, instead of new models, we were talking about also on the flip side, what, what should, should be discontinued. Yeah. And we were saying that, you know, the Deep Sea Challenge and the, the Le Mans Daytona should be, and we got Bat about, 500. we got about like half and Bat half 500. There. But even, I don't even know if I would call that 500 because the, the Le Mans is, so they just, they discontinued the white gold and now it's being produced in yellow gold. So kind of got discontinued we have seen a pop in valuations on the white gold you know just in the like the very short term right now um but i don't know it's i still think they should have discontinued both of them they should have. um but but i also whatever. can understand in terms of rolex being the the size and the scale of the manufacturer that they are why they wouldn't want to make a brand new movement and a brand new dial and do it for one year and call it sure, sure so i get that sure um, then we have loose tooth with let's, those. Let's let's stick with just Rolex for okay. now. Let's we, we can get back to other, go down one other more because I want to talk to GC with the Eric Cartman picture. <laughs> um, I didn't mean to slam the desk on you at all, uh, but I don't I don't think we're gonna see that. Although I agree with you, if they brought that back to forty mil with the big orange hand, I would be all over it. So I, you and I, maybe will be waiting with bated breath. And we have one more Rolex comment from delusional fraud. <laughs> I believe, I believe I've had that occur to me before. Uh, very ho-hum releases from Rolex. Seems like they made a point to focus on precious metals at the expense of steel. Interesting. As if they are trying to condition the market to pay for a higher retail price product. But not, not I mean, not to say you're wrong, but I mean, they. what about the GMT? You know, the, the, right. the, the black and gray GMT. You know, yeah, they. there are a lot of... Um, that was it though for a steel release. Metal. Right? I'm trying to think. I'm just running through them in my head. Because then right it was now. like gold Daytonas, which are sick. The the the, the, white, the, the white gold Tahitian mop dial Daytona is gorgeous. That is yeah. so nice. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. Yes. I think the baguette bezel ones. Yeah. And then precious right, metal sky dwellers the on the Jubilee. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the thing is, is I mean, think think back to 2023 when they released a host of steel models. You know, um, in you know all different colorways and all kinds of crazy stuff. Maybe it's so, cyclical. Maybe it's cyclical. I mean, and and, and to be honest, you know, <laughs> oh, we've and then been platinum 1908, which is gorgeous, uh, with that crazy dial. But honestly, the the market. I mean, we, and we've been talking about this is that you know the market has been moving because for the past three four years everything was steel sport watch and like the market was crazy for them. Yeah. And we've been slowly moving you know away from that because everything it's you know everything does one of these and we you know the steel sport watch trend is going like this and we're getting back into dressier precious metal stuff smaller dressier precious metal stuff so i don't think they're necessarily trying to do anything nefarious but that's but, a really interesting data point i didn't even think about that that but, that is the the sole steel release from them yeah that's actually kind of crazy i guess wild uh, i don't know um I'll also just a quick side note i've i've heard 
in a few different places this being referred to as the Bruce Wayne, and I absolutely love that. Ah, uh, I only <laughs> work in black. Yeah, and black, very dark black and gray. gray. I mean, come on, it's pretty good. I like that. Um, will Rolex revamp the GMT line? Wonder why they didn't do the Coke this year. Because Rolex is the absolute best at not giving people what no, they want. No. Right? They wanted to steal Pepsi for like... <sighs> From the day it was discontinued to the day they brought it back, people yeah. were like, "Bring back the Pepsi!" And, well, and they also, like, we're 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 gonna say every single year that they're bringing back a new Coke because yeah. one of these years we're gonna be right. You're gonna, eventually, you'll, you'll get exactly, it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Platinum 1908. I love it. I didn't see that coming. Me neither. I I thought it was gonna be a dual time. I thought the moon um, phase, honestly. The moon phase, yep. like those, I would have put more money on that than if mm-hmm. somebody was like ice blue platinum. Yeah. Um, I mean, so what price point on that is what, 30, 32, something like that? Is that it? I think so. That actually yeah. feels bizarrely reasonable. But are you going to go out and, I guess when you compare it to maybe say like a 5227 or a 6119 paddock, you know, a, a, a basic Calatrava, it tracks. Well, you're paying that for gold. That's what I'm saying. The for, the, for the 6119G, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. the retail is about 30 grand. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it makes sense price-wise. And honestly, I think it's gorgeous. I, you know, I want to see it in person, obviously. But that, that um, amazing guilloche ice blue dial is, is I was going to say, stunning. I can see a lot of people who are very heavy Rolex guys mm-hmm. who, like, that is going to be their dress watch. They're going to go sure. get that platinum ice blue because that is such a calling card of Rolex now. Right. If you see that ice blue dial, you know it's platinum. It's Super special. Well, it's funny. One of my um, one of my friends actually reached out to me earlier today and asked, "Hey, does Rolex do the ice blue dial in anything other than platinum?" And I had to say, "No, I'm, I'm sorry, no, they, they don't." Do not. But I mean, you know, it's it's like you said, it's it's a calling card for platinum roll, you know, platinum yeah. Rolex, and it would it's it's a it's a stunner. Like you know, yeah. if they did make it in white gold or something, like they would sell a million of them. But so we have a uh, a black GMT here, which will always be kind of a special watch for me because this was the first ceramic GMT. Um, actually, this was the first like ceramic bezeled watch, not Period, even GMT, because yeah. right. this was before the sub. And this was a big deal. I remember when this came out, and this was what, 06, 07? I think it was 07, yeah. Something like that. Um, and this came out, and people were like, oh, it's a piece of jewelry now. It's not a tool watch <laughs> anymore. And like, what are they doing? And I remember thinking, I actually really liked it because I like the, uh, let me get that green hand out. I like that green hand. So in some respects, I think it's very cool that they have brought that back Mm -hmm. in that black and gray one. But I'm also kind of like, I don't know. That, it, I don't understand why they brought that back because this has always been like less popular. It's been very sleepy. Do you think now that it's a two-tone bezel, people are going to be interested in this? No, I mean, I, I do... I do agree that I feel that that release is fairly lazy on Rolex's part. They literally just took the black and gray bezel from, you know, the incredible yellow gold GMT from last year. Which, and, is, and, which is still one of my favorite release, releases of the recent, you know, the, the recent past. You know, pop that bezel on there um, with that green GMT hand and said, okay, you know, we got a new model. And um, I don't know. It's... It's weird. I mean, so here's the question: Will you pay the premium for that? No, if you want not. the Jubilee bracelet, I'm not asking you. I'm asking them. <laughs> Will you pay the premium on that? If you want the Jubilee, I get it. But if you're like, if you're gonna buy the Oyster version, mm-hmm. will you buy? You can switch that back. Will you buy this one, mm-hmm. or will you pay the premium? Because we know that that one, two, six, seven, ten is gonna be a premium. There's no question. Yeah, like, for that's... for a short period of time. But I think on. A premium over this. Oh, for sure. Of course. Of course. You know. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. It's interesting. We'll see kind of what happens with that. I'm also interested to see, is Rolex going to continue to produce, you know, so what? So now, in in the GMT family, you have the uh, the you have the Pepsi, you have the, the new black and gray, you have the yellow gold black and gray, you have the, you know, the left, whatever, the left-hander. Yep. You have the Batman. Like, yep. are they going to continue to produce five very, well, actually, and the with the two tone and the root beer, sorry. So, six, seven, you know, at least seven variants of, of the GMT, or are they going to pare it down a little bit? Um, and uh, and what are you laughing at over there? Just uh, oh, GC with yeah. Jubilee is everywhere now. Ubiquitous. <laughs> Great word, by the way. I love good vocabulary. Um, um, but, you know, are they, are they going to pare that down, or are they going to continue to produce a whole bunch of these? 
slight variations of, of the I can, same flavor. I can see the Batman quietly going away because mm -hmm. they've done that for a while now. Yeah, That's over 10 now. years yeah, yeah. since they 12, did that initial right, Batman. So I can see that quietly going away. Yeah. The Rolex Xerox. <laughs> Put the Guinness. <laughs> Xerox I, still, I, still, I still like the Bruce Wayne. I like the Bruce Wayne. Um, <laughs> Everywhere I've heard is the ghost. Everybody's yeah. calling it the ghost, yeah, which we'll I see. guess... It, it tracks. It's yeah, good. Yeah. All right. Any other Rolex things you want to hit? No, I mean, those were my main things that, that really stood out to me. Um, I think we have to go to the next big dog. Do you want to go paddock? I do. Okay. Let's do it. Um, I want to talk paddock. Um, I am overall not impressed with paddock's releases this year. What is your, what is your top line take on paddock's releases? Um... That's a tough one because there's there's a couple things I think are really very smart and really good looking, and then there's a couple things that just didn't make sense to me, like that quartz aquanaut. Yeah, I don't get that. Either. I find a really interesting move from them, um, and we have loose tooth talking about the denim straps on a few paddocks, yeah. and obviously we've all seen the c comparisons we knew were coming <laughs> to another brand that did not only a denim strap but a denim <laughs> hubla hubla hubla. Denim like the jeans. Yeah, no, it doesn't um, look good. It doesn't look good. It, you know, it. I find it really interesting that a lot of brands are moving away from Gator. Um, like we're seeing a lot of paddocks that come with either calf skin or yep. fabric, or in this case now denim. Right. Um, we're seeing uh, Vacheron with the new overseas getting away from including that gator strap and making that a calf skin now right part of it i think is because of the difficulty with internationally shipping yep, gator for sure but then i also think it's just a sea change of the way people are wearing watches you know not as many people are looking for a shiny black alligator strap right you right. know so i i think you know let's pull up the 52 i see all right so yeah go to the, go to the uh the wrist cam david if you can and so let the, me, let the, me make the hands pretty. The fifty two thirty six P, so the inline perpetual that came out what two years ago now? It was either it was either two, two or, three, or three two or three years ago. One of again Not a so <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, one of my favorite paddock releases probably of the past like ten plus years. I just think this was such a beautiful and interesting and new fresh design. This watch is perfect with that blue dial and the platinum case. It's just really, really I sharp. Let's see if I can show the texture on the dial, but I'm not going to get it on this cam. This also, this watch kind of falls in line with one of my favorite paddocks that nobody cares about, the regulator. Yeah. Exactly. And so you're getting that same kind case. of, uh, you're getting the case. You're also getting that graining on the dial. There's like where a striation. There's a beautiful yeah. texture to the dial. You get a killer movement like this is probably a hair big for something I would wear in this context, but I'd wear it. But so then to just take this and put just a basic salmon dial on it, I think it totally loses a lot of the elegance of the watch. I don't know. It does it. This one really actually like I was almost offended by this. I, I really, really don't like I mean, like it the, feels the like low dial. hanging fruit. Of course. I can't I can't knock it. So here, why don't you pull up the salmon? Here's sure. the blue. Now go to the salmon. There you go. So there it is, Salmon. They've gone to the charcoal markers, yep. which we saw on the 5270 yep. Platinum, right? right? Which is which, um, which is a very nice contrast. It does look beautiful. I actually really, really like the charcoal hands um, You know, and, and indices. They look really nice. I like that they didn't do a matching strap. I hate when they do the Salmon dial and they do that lighter brown so that it's almost all the same. I also like, really don't like that burgundy I want, brownish strap I want strap contrast either, on it. Um, it is low hanging fruit. I'm yeah. not gonna. I'm. I'm gonna call a spade a spade. But, but I think it's nice. I think it's gonna sell really well. I yeah, think people I are gonna be into it. I wonder. It paddock wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. That's so good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, the paddock five oh six. The paddock five oh one. Five oh one. That's what it is. Um, uh, what was I saying? I don't know. You got the train left by... the station. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Moving on. Is Paddock cheapening the salmon dial? Yes. There's is, far too are many. they there watering are down many. the specialness of the salmon dial white metal case? A hundred percent. Anything on Instagram? Uh, the denim strap looks like they made a collaboration with Balenciaga. Uh, did I imagine <laughs> that those Paddock will come with both leather and denim? Yes, you're correct. They will come with both. Um, what else? That's about it right there. Uh, just a lot of ripping on Paddock for making a jean strap. Um, so, 
continuing on through Paddock's releases, why don't we talk about one that we actually really like now, or a couple that we like? Yeah. So, here, David, if you want to go to the uh, my my computer again. So, 5268. The Disco Ball. The Disco Ball. My God, is this thing amazing. Yeah. It's, it's totally dumb. It's totally ridiculous. There's your price right there, 235 670 It's Which, bonkers. Which, for something with that level of gem set, mm -hmm. I, I mean, if somebody's willing to spend 500 grand on a Rainbow Daytona, yeah. isn't this worth two and a half? I mean, you know, very few people will actually get this at retail. But I love man alive. Look at the look at the clasp. There's even the diamonds in the in the clasp. Just a taste. So great. Just a taste. It's I mean whatever. It's ridiculous. I'll probably never see one in real person, but it's it's pretty pretty spectacular. And, and it's then, not huge. No, no. It's I was gonna huge. say it's, it's that reduced size. It's, it's yeah. 38, isn't it? Or just under 39. Well, Paddock I think. measures these weird though. Paddock measures these from like 38, 8, yeah. 10 to 4. So it's, sorry, I'm it's, scrolling. I'm, if if I'm giving anybody uh, whiplash or you know motion sickness on the uh, on the on the feed, let me know. Um, and then 5738 ellipse on a bracelet. Yeah. Like, yes. But the only problem with this is that price point. I was going to say the same thing that yeah. I would not have expected. I know that 5738, as a rule, is a little bit more expensive because it has a 240 in it. Sure. Yes. Which is the best movement paddock ever Agreed. made. Agreed. That, that's um, worth it, in my opinion. And there's always a premium for that micro rotor automatic. But where did I don't know where they get sixty grand? I guess for just pure on that watch. gold weight. I'm not really sure to be honest. Yeah, that's that one's great. Was there anything else that stood out to you for Paddock, Rob? That I'm very conflicted on that new World Timer. I don't yeah. know how I feel about that. Not, not a big fan to be honest. Um, this guy, the there it is. Yeah. yeah, they did a World Timer with a scent with a date, like yeah. the the date around the outer chapter ring with a pointer hand. Um, that also has a denim strap. It's getting really um, busy, in my opinion. I, I really, I really like Paddock's World Timers. You know their current well, crop of World Timers. Well, that's my thing too. Is like the fifty nine thirty. I was gonna say the fifty nine thirty is stunner. amazing. The enamel World Times yep. are tragically undervalued. We talk They're about works this of art all the time. Yeah. The fifty one ten, fifty one thirty. I'd wear any one of them. I don't care. You give me a World Timer, I'd be thrilled. Agreed. Agreed. It's a cool complication, but it just it. It yes. looks cheap to me. Yeah, it I, reminds I agree. me of like some of the other world timers that you see from some other brands, where they try to throw too much at it. Like yeah. there's too much going agreed. on. Agreed. Agreed. It did and not then, need that 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 addition of the uh, of the, of the date wheel wind whatever uh, around the uh, the perimeter there. Yeah. And then my my God. The fifty-five twenty. The Frankenstein, the Frankenstein in rose in gold. Rose. Interesting color of the dial. Is that champagne? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, it almost looks like a. It looks sickly, to be honest. Like <laughs> it's. It looks I'm like sorry, it's, it looks sir. Like your watch about, has jaundice. Yeah, it looks like it's about to uh. puke or something. <laughs> you know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've I've come around on the on the fifty-five twenty. This the standard platinum with the black dial. Um, it's an insane watch. It's an insane it's watch. Actually, I actually, and everybody I like wanted it. to rip on it like Frankenstein and all that with all the pushers, and no. I get that. It's it's really cool though when you handle it in real Agreed. life and when you and I actually I've even warmed up to the fifty five twenty four I actually think that's a pretty decent watch okay um, I I'd change the strap but I'd wear it uh, I don't know I want to see that one in person Same. I think the photos of that the dial color is weird I think the old um, world time struggle session <laughs> <laughs> the only other paddock that you know I think is worth talking about is this fifty one sixty four G so the paddock Aquanaut Travel Time, which we have Rob has here in steel. David, if you want to go to the wrist cam, um, which was discontinued and is only being, you know, or was only being produced in rose gold, now coming back in white gold with a pretty awesome, like, almost like dusty Tiffany blue. Um, go to that. Yeah, there we go. You know, with that dusty Tiffany blue dial and What's strap. What's the strap on that? Can I just see? Well, they're it's the same, it's the the same color as the dial. Uh, right, but it's not denim. No, no, no. It's oh, they missed oh. an opportunity. Oh, my God. If they put an Aquanaut, <laughs> Aquanaut on a denim strap, get out of here. <laughs> so this watch, in my opinion, is one of the greatest sport watches Paddock has ever made. I agree. I've always liked this watch. I think it is a fantastic dial layout. It is the most user-friendly dual time yep. in the world. Look at that. Back and forth. No tools required. Super unobtrusive um, date down at 6 o'clock. Like, it's... It's a great, great piece. Tragically, it's a little bit too this. large for my oh, wrist, but um, 
look at that. I mean, that's perfect. I'd wear that with a suit, rubber strap and all, and, and it's lovely. I think it's great. And I love the fact that you could make it just a regular three-hander when you don't want the second time zone. Right, right. Look at that. It fits like a glove. It, like, hugs the wrist. The case is well-designed. Uh, white gold blue dial's fine. I like it I'm, a lot. I'm very ambivalent I like about it. that. I mean, one. I want to see it in person, but I think it's, I think it makes sense. It's a, it's something new. It's a little bit different. You know, it's, it's worth creating a, a you know, technically a new, a new model for, but you want to know the crazy thing? Yeah. So back, back to that ellipse, this, so the new white gold Travel Time Aquanaut is $2,500 more, that's it, than that rose gold ellipse on the bracelet. This Shrek is, ears. this is 63K. <laughs> And that that ellipse is sixty and change. Like how? How? So then maybe how? the ellipse is a good deal. How does that get? Maybe justified? the ellipse is actually a good deal. That's insane. Um, the you know what I'd love to see is is this watch, the fifty one sixty four. It white gold's fine, whatever with the khaki green. That'd be cool, right? Like that that like would that. be the watch, man. Had that missed an opportunity watch. to put jorts on an aquanaut. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, keep. Keep the jean jokes coming. They're they're we're, we're only only if they're a right little now. frayed on the Those edge. Those are so there. good. It's got to so, be yeah, like a little frayed, right? maybe like right where the buckle comes so, together. So cup, a couple of uh, Instagram uh, questions, comments, whatever. So um, I feel like I should sniff this before I drink. It. Like, <laughs> in this glass, I need to like. Uh, quick reminder, guys. Instagram, really sorry, but uh, if you if you want to see what we're looking at on my computer screen, jump over to our our YouTube live stream. Um, that's the only place that we're able to do that right now. So. Um, but so the gentleman's driver said is asking, what do we think of the Bulgari Octa Ultra? And Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I didn't, right I didn't even think like about that. grabbing a um, an Octo to put on to put on the you know the do table you want to see today. If we have a Finissimo? Um, but you know, Bulgari obviously has Bulgari and Piaget traditionally have gone back and forth for world's thinnest X for a number of years now, and then a couple of years ago, Richard Mill, you know kick the door Crash down. Crash the party like yeah. Kool-Aid man. I was going to say, they Kool-Aid man <laughs> through the wall and came out with the, you know, the crazy Ferrari um, ultra-thin ridiculous thing. Which I have to agree with the general sentiment of that watch, which is that it is technically amazing. Of course. And visually... Terrible. Unattractive. No, it looks like, I, you, it looks like you, put, you put a strap on a credit card and put it on your wrist. Right? I, I don't... I don't know. For me, like I can appreciate what they did, uh -huh. but I I don't see that in lust after it. No, me neither. You know, it me doesn't neither. like it doesn't have that like oh my god, that's I, so incredible. I almost don't even think of that as an RM if that makes any sense. Perfection. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't. It, it kind of stands off on its own. Um, Let's hear it for P A Adam. Thank there you, go. Adam. Um, but then you know, so this year, if you guys didn't see, you know, Bulgari came out with the. I'm gonna pull up the details right now, but it's so it's a perpetual calendar, and it we is. We can look the, at this one in the meantime. Yeah, look at that guy. Um, I love the fact the that details. this is the one we have too. This is like the standard titanium version of this watch, the Bulgari Octo Finissimo. If you had told me five or six years ago that I was gonna ex get excited about a watch with Bulgari on the dial, huh? I would have said not a chance. Yeah, agreed. And I probably would have bet you a slice of pizza, <laughs> which is my standard bet. Or a cup that, of coffee. Yeah. That no way, not for me. <laughs> This, I've liked these since they come out. I still like these. Yep, I same. would love to add one to my collection. I was really hoping that they were going to finally do one that was like two millimeters smaller so that it would, it would comfortably fit my wrist because I have a tiny little doll's wrist. But... So this to me is like retro futurism. This is like what you would have seen on like a 60s or 70s sci-fi movie that they thought everybody would wear something like this in the future. And I mean, we, we've, we've okay. talked about this watch a million times where... Again, kind of like we already talked about at the beginning, it's so difficult in this industry that has, you know, been in operation continuously for the past, what, 350 years plus, whatever it is, to come out with a new, fresh design. And Bulgari managed Beautiful to do it, order. whatever it was, 12, 13 years ago now. And then they built out this line to, you know, to go from, you know, a time-only piece to adding GMTs. Uh, chronos, perpetual calendars, world timers, like all kinds of interesting complications. And in this look at this. They have cutouts in the bracelet here so that the clasp can go into the bracelet. That is like the easiest thing in the world, and yet nobody has no, done it. nobody does it. It's so Nobody does it. Look how great that is. It's really, There's really There's no like extra over here to like irritate you. Like, I mean... Offset, small seconds, like cool looking dial, gray, all, all gray, all day. 
I'm all for it's, it. It's awesome. Dave, I, David, what is the wanna, thickness on this I would say, guy? So, David, go that that is 5.15 millimeters, which That's is nuts. crazy as is. We've and got then, movements thicker than that in we, this place. <laughs> many, honestly. And then thank you, thank you to Hodinky for their uh, their their lovely article here. Um, here you go, you know, perfect representation of the the new ultra, which is 1.7 millimeters thick. Which, you know, I'm, I'm very interested, we'll, we'll never see, well, I won't say never, we might see one of these, but I think they're only making like, I can't remember, 60 pieces or some, something, something very, David, go ahead, yeah. How easy is this guy to support? This is what I was just going to say, is, <laughs> one tap on a disc. I, I'm very interested to know how flexible this is and like, you know, how easy it is to, or how durable it is, and, you know, and I don't expect it obviously to be able to, you know, I don't know, do do what a, a Rolex Submariner does or something, what, but... What is the rigi rigidity? Right. What is the rigidity of that titanium? Case. Right, right. Like, right. is titanium a rigid metal? It is, it is. It's 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 a highly rigid, highly durable okay. metal. Because you couldn't make this in gold. Because if you made this in gold and you had that, like, you're wearing that bracelet and, and it's hot and sweaty and you swell up, like, a millimeter, that case is going to flex and that movement's going to completely so here, here, stop. And, and here you go. So they're making 20 pieces at a cost of $529,000. Yeah, so, you know, but whatever. That's it's, a bargain but it's fine. compared to the million-dollar Richard Mill. Exactly. David, you can go back to the main cam now. You know, and, and you're, you're right. It's, it's a bargain. These these kinds of pieces are, they're just, ex, they're engineering exercises. And it's, it's a just, concept car. It's a concept it's car. It's a concept car exactly. for your wrist. But exactly. it's, the difference is you can't buy a concept car. Right. You can buy that. Right. Which, you know, if, if your pocketbook is big enough to be able to own that and to be able to say, like, this is the thinnest watch anybody has ever made. It's like it's almost impossible. Well, that's a cool thing. And then, you know, so in addition to this Bulgari, Piaget came out with the thinnest tourbillon ever produced. I'm gonna let me pull up those details I actually real quick. Missed that. Yo, you like didn't see that one. Okay. Um, Go ahead, David. I've noticed a lot of these companies now have higher prices than they did previously uh -huh. versus mm -hmm. like just you know thin watch. Do you think on the secondary market there's gonna be a huge fall off or do you think it's just gonna be way more of a I think it very much depends on the production numbers. Right. Like you right. Had it, like their stuff Yes, some yes, some no. I think that it really depends because the watch market is true supply and demand, yeah. right? And if there's enough supply, then the demand can be there, but if it doesn't outpace the supply, then it's a discount watch. Right. You know, whereas in if you can't get it, it well, can be over retail for something like a Rolex GMT, which not to say it's not special, but it is a watch that's produced in very large numbers compared to stuff like Paddock and Longa. And even Cartier, for that matter. Well, and I think like the, the the perfect the perfect segue will be to the uh, these guys, uh, Longa, and their and their pricing. I was thinking we need to head this? to the Hold House on. of Richemont next. The yeah, the world's thinnest tourbillon watch. I just want to find the details on this real quick because it's it's unbelievable. Of course, I can't find it, but we can come back to it. Yeah, whatever. We'll go back. You can to it, so you can keep search going. away if you want. Shall we head to Richemont House? Oh, here it is. And... No, sorry, it's two millimeters. Two millimeters. And it's a turbine. With a flying turbine. A it's flying? unbelievable. Well, yeah, I guess it has to be flying because if you put the bridge yeah. over top of it, you'd have a whole other yeah, half a exactly. mil there. So it, be, it beats the RM by 0.05 millimeters, which is, oh, sorry, the Octa Finissimo does. Because uh, they made a turbine too, right? They did, yeah. See, that to me is not as good looking. No, it's not. As it's like not. the Bulgari stuff, because the Bulgari stuff, in my opinion, has a little bit more character. But the Bulgari doesn't have a turbine in it. You know, it I'm not. One, though. Yes, but it's not two millimeters thick. Oh, okay. But. Anyways, all right, let's move on. Sorry, that was that was a useless uh, sidetrack there. <laughs> yeah, we lost half our audience, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, keep uh, moving, keep moving. <laughs> Where are you okay. going? Okay, uh, we have IWC, Jaeger, Longa, Vacheron, all of which live under the umbrella of Richemont. Yep. Um, we're, I think we should go to Longa first. Let's do it, yeah. Uh, all of these, I feel like, are going to be a little bit quicker than the first two brands we talked about. Um, because, like, with Longa this year... I feel like they had their crown jewel and then they had a couple of other kind of interesting things and then it was kind of a quiet year for them, you know, because you have obviously the... I mean, all I can think of, yeah, I can think of two releases, honestly. The Lumen and the Blue. Right, and that's it. What else, what, what, what else did I miss? Blue Datto. And the Blue Datto, I just, I don't care. Um, it's cool. I'm sure it'll be beautiful. 
Yeah, it's that's limited too, though. It is. That's quite limited, so we're yes. not going to see a lot of those. So, so the, yeah, go ahead. Um, talking about lumens, um, I wonder if this is the end of the lumen now for them because this feels like the swan song. Well, this is what the tenth anniversary of the uh, of the lumen, correct? So, for those of you playing the home game, the lumen means that we have a smoked sapphire dial, which is mostly transparent. And everything that's white is luminous. You want to yep. hand me the... Uh, we came prepared we this did. time with a UV flashlight so that you guys can actually see. The subdials are luminous. The date discs are luminous. The hands... And you can even see, like, the date discs underneath of the dial there that are glowing. We have a glowing track. It's, it's really amazing. They have done a couple longer ones. They did one with the moon, one without. They did the datagraph. Yep. They did... The light work. Two Zite works. Mm -hmm. This is well, the, known as the Phantom. This is the original Lumen, the very first one. And it's amazing, actually. We were looking at some historical pricing data. When this first came out, oh, I can't remember what it was. I feel like it was 90 remember, or yeah. something like that. Like it wasn't that crazy compared to what we're looking at now. Even that Honey Gold. So they did a Honey Gold Zeitwerk Lumen yep. that people were Which was falling two years ago, over I each believe. other to buy. Yeah. So the Lumen is very cool. It requires, you know, a little bit more than just a different dial because they've got different parts underneath of it and they they decorate these differently. They have now taken to doing them in honey gold. Um, we have to show the data graph movement because it's here. It's so it's good. Stellar. It's so pretty. Um, this is an incredible watch. Yeah, I, this I, is I love like, that piece. Oh, I mean, look at that. And, like, this is cool because it's not super loud in terms of, like, if you're wearing this out in public. No. Like, people might be like, oh, that's a cool watch. But it takes a very discerning idea. eye to pick up on the fact that of, of how special this watch actually is. Most people would just see, I mean, most people would just see a, a big yeah. watch. or And then people that know watches would just see a dado and get excited. And then, you know, it takes... The, a real special someone to, to realize Where do that you it see is both of these in the same room? it's so wild that's wild David right. if you want to kick over to the uh, to my computer Let's real kick quick. over to the laptop so you know Longa like Rob said you know did the the dado the white gold dado with a blue dial um, the anniversary piece and then they did this so honey gold lumen dado perpetual tourbillon so all the things all the things beyond a split or a double split or a triple split that Longa does in honey gold lumen so they're making 50 pieces of this. Which is the smallest Lumen run they it have is. done to date. Yep. Um, and the MSRP is going to be $620,000. And that is not taking into account the amount of money that you're going to need to spend and the number of pieces you're going to need to buy from your Longa AD in order to be eligible to buy this piece. So this is like true, true unobtainium. Um, I am... I am willing to bet Look at oh, that. Oh, it's so good. the glowing moon is it's the reason so cool yeah, yeah yeah um i'm willing to bet all 50 are probably completely spoken for for sure or at least very close if, if they weren't when if they weren't already spoken for when longa released this on monday yeah they very quickly were like a couple hours because there's the definitely 50 longa collectors at that level mm -hmm. ready to go who probably own all the other lumens for and sure like what you gotta for sure you gotta I mean, do it this is just it, it it is really really special though like my god yeah. look at that thing i like a tourbillon that's only in the back yeah you're a big fan of like the 5101 yeah. and you know the the hidden paddock tourbillons. tourbillons in general they paddock don't show it off yeah. that often yeah uh there's a couple yeah, longas the old school longa one perpetual yep. tourbillon has it only in the back hey we got an upvote from grandmaster chime with some watermelons thank you <laughs> appreciate that but yeah i mean that that's a stunner that's it, I'm trying to think like Longa's done some interesting stuff over the past few years. I think that's probably my favorite release uh, that I can think of. You know, we still haven't seen the Odysseus Chrono. Um, we haven't seen the Odysseus Titanium. We haven't seen an Odysseus Titanium. I wonder titanium. if we ever will because that's that's a an elusive watch apparently. Yeah. yeah. Um, we haven't even seen Yacht Master Titanium. We haven't seen the Yacht Master Titanium. Actually, you know what? To backtrack for three seconds, I was actually going to say we have only seen one Rolex 1908 since they released that a year ago. No, we've seen more than that. No, we have not. Are you sure? I bet you a pizza pizza. I don't want to. Well, <laughs> you know what, Rob? The company's buying us pizza tomorrow, so I will, if I'm wrong, it is pizza Friday I will tomorrow. happily get you a piece of pizza tomorrow. No. Oh, wow, you're right. Damn. We have seen one. So oh, I ask myself then, does that mean 
that nobody's buying them, which I think is not the case. No, or does case. it mean that the people who are buying them are keeping them because they like them? I don't know. I don't, I don't know anyone keeping, who's bought one. So I think people are keeping that one. I hope so. I think Sorry, I mean, the one that we had, the white, the white gold gray dial that we had, was went great. immediately. It was beautiful. And we always we always talk about the old Cellini moon phase, how great of a watch that was. Yeah. So I'm not surprised if people you know yeah. buy it and love it. Um, all right, let's keep rocking through here. Okay. Why don't we go to Cartier now? Um, because obviously, yeah. We haven't gotten there yet. That's, it's on the well, table. Oh, actually, we'll I'm sorry. We were we were doing Richemont. So why don't we why don't we Cartier continue? Is Cartier is technically Richemont. So. Why don't uh, you do your Cartier? Do your Cartier thing. <laughs> All right, so... Oh, hold on. What? The new Datagraph Perpetual Tourbillon Honey Gold Lumen, I like DPT-HG, is lovely, but the non-lumen variants are still better to me. Precious metal dials, right? Mm -hmm. Solid precious metal moon phase and tachometer. Yeah. Tachometer with a power reserve. I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a German silver dial. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it's... Sure. I, yeah. I love a good dato. Like I would. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying we no to had any that, data that black dial, data graph early perpetual oh, 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 that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that you had bought. Yes. Uh, is that platinum or white gold? That's platy. Platy black yeah. dial, right? Mm -hmm. That was like one of the most amazing masterpieces of watchmaking I've ever seen. Yeah, you look at the back of that thing, and you can just get lost. Yeah. In that movement, I mean that it's criminal again that that watch is available under retail mm -hmm. like it boggles my mind yeah, yeah. but that's, yeah that's I, I guess i agree they're <laughs> they're all fantastic i wouldn't kick any of them no, out of bed definitely not so all right cartier, cartier. we saw the return of, of the, the tour two so you know cartier is is kind of a you know they're 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 in a privileged position where they have such an incredibly deep back catalog of of like iconic designs to pull from every year you know as we've seen, you know, over the past several years with the pre, the, the new kind of revised um, relaunch Privé collection where they pick one iconic design from their back catalog and, and reissue it. And this year we got the Tour 2 Mana Pusher. Um, so this is just, you I know, wish we had one of those. I, I wish we had, you know, the classic um, white gold, uh, white dial, white and blue dial uh, example. From Movement by Viani and... De Denis uh, Flagellet and F.P. Jordan. And F.P. Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, anyways, they they came out with they came out with a few things this year, but the main one, you know, that that really kind of caught my eye was the new Tortu Mana Pusher. So, you know, a couple that different yellow gold one. Looks I was just gonna say, so, so a couple good. different variations. So you have the platinum, um, you know, with the red cabochon, and then you have the yellow gold um, with the blue cabochon. Both have that silver dial. Um, you know, you have time only, and then you have a chrono. Um, if you're getting it, you got to get the chrono. Like it's that. It's just an incredible piece. I think the piece. yellow gold time only is intriguing. I want to see the size and the proportions on that. This is an eight day. I believe this has a Jaeger eight day movement in it. Like this is um, a very, very, very similar movement. I don't want to say for certain because I'm not 100%, but this looks very, very similar to the movement that's in those like master eight day mm -hmm. watches with the grand eight. Um, so I think that that Here, is Dave, probably you can go a to, drop go to in. My screen now and but we'll show these real quick. But this one is a little bit big. That's my only problem here. And again, sorry, Instagram, if you're watching, jump over to our YouTube channel. You can see what what I am pulling up on my computer screen. Thanks again to Hodinky for all oh, the coverage. the yellow gold. And you know what? Honestly, usually I would say platinum, and I think I actually advised one of my clients to jump on the platinum train, but. Personally, you know, if if I was gonna buy one, I'm looking at that that yellow gold mono pusher with the blued hands. Like, that yep. is perfection. I'm That's really the interested. only thing they did wrong on the time only. Those gold hands are not the way. Agreed. They, it should have been the blued hands across yeah. the board. And I'm very interested to see photos of the of these on the wrist. Um, you I know, also maybe it's because I'm too much of a purist, but what? the the metal Roman numerals, whether they're the applied, white, gold, or platinum, or whatever, the applied Roman numerals on oh, that. I like it. I think it's interesting. You know, I mean, obviously, I want black painted. And then, oh, look at that with the diamonds. Yes. Is uh, it a small watch or are they big stones? What on the? Oh, oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> if that's a men's size watch, those are some monster those are some diamonds, monster and diamonds. that would be killer. so forty three by thirty four. That 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 is a fairly traditional size it's not i don't think it's it's 10 mil thickness is good yeah i'm it's going to be interesting to see how oh but wear. here no what? go down to the chrono that's the time only oh oh, oh. go to the chrono 40, 41, 41 by 32, by 32. So it's smaller what oh the time oh, no. only yeah see look at me what are we reading we're reading the time only so the the chrono is larger at 43 are you sure robert 
Dude, it says time only right, right. there. Oh, column wheel chronograph. On there that you go, one. my friend. Okay, so um, that's the smaller one. Seven point so, two on that. That's fancy. That's super thin. So that'll be very interesting to see in person. I honestly haven't even seen many photos of it on people's wrists yet, so I I can't really say. But the pricing seems really K. reasonable. Yeah. Very reasonable for yeah. these. David, you can flip us back now. From um, yeah. So how does and now the question we ask ourselves all the time: How does the same company yeah. make that watch? I know. And then decide it's a good idea to make Santos a rum stack with. I know. I was gonna say it's like so. It's funny. We actually hear because. I am such a sucker and a you know uh, uh, a sick of fan for Cartier and everything that they do. I love to try and defend them, but I can't. Like it's, we always talk about the duality of, of Cartier, where on the one hand you have these pieces like these Privé pieces, yep. or you know plenty of other pieces from their back catalog all the oh, way yeah. through the '90s, 2000s, and even you know pretty recently that are just like stunning designs yeah. and they're timeless and beautiful and they're just absolute home runs and yeah. then you have these pieces that are just like you know the 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 triple xl santos and you know all these crazy things that just they don't they're not in line with the, the ethos of the brand and yeah. kind of along those lines this year they came out with that santos that runs backwards for some reason so yeah. like great cool i'm glad that they're doing something weird i don't know why you would ever you would ever buy that piece? The one thing I'll say is that Cartier has been into these one-year novelties, like a true novelty, right? Where they run it for a year and then they either change it, like with the, uh, is it the Tank Must where it's a different dial color every year? I think yeah. that that's kind of a cool idea. Yeah, yeah I like that too. Um, I'm wondering if this isn't also going to be a fairly true novelty where they so. run it for a year and then they're like, okay, it's all yeah. done. Because it's just bizarre. It's I don't very get strange. It. Like, did Santos Dumont fly backwards? Like, where are they getting this from? There must be some place. I don't know. Anything on Instagram we should? Uh, no, nothing, nothing, nothing about? crazy. What else? Um, we're we're getting down. Oh wow! Final ten minutes here. So, yeah. what else do we want to talk about? Um, one, one quick one, and then yep. I'll let you go. Um, Ferrier came out with a really interesting release this year where they Give took that classic. Yeah, you take both of them because it's literally a combination of the two essentially. So they took the. Uh, we'll go to the wrist cam, David. Um, they took the their classic, classic case, um, and they put an annual calendar in it with a moon phase, and they ma it's being made, I believe, in platinum, and ro it's rose gold and some white metal. I don't remember which. Um, but so it's a, the rose gold is a um, like a silver dial, and then the white metal, I believe, is a black dial or dark blue dial. I can't remember. Um, Focus. But it is an absolute stunner. It's like exactly what Ferrier should yeah. do. It's and you want to talk about perfect proportions. Right. Like this classic case by them. This is the classic origin. This is the manual wine in titanium. This is the titanium, which I, this piece is beautiful. I really it love this watch. It is so good. And if you're like me, where you're really into very traditional watchmaking, this is kind mm -hmm. of the best of that you can get, you know? There's nothing on here that's really. There is some technical stuff yeah. under the hood that's quite incredible. Yeah, and that dry escape and everything. Yeah, some things he's doing there, but it's it's very much like you can tell he came from Paddock, in right. my opinion. And this this piece in particular, this titanium version, is kind of like the absolute ideal for me. And so they're taking when that I'm, you know, I and they're putting a calendar. Like you, I, I'm I'm very much into more traditional watchmaking. I do really appreciate some funk, and I do like the independent scene. I just haven't really found many that like I could see myself wearing on a regular basis. But Ferrier is like my my absolute ideal. It they're super classic, but they're doing interesting things. You know, like you said, with that some some interesting watchmaking, some pretty advanced um, you know technical engineering yeah. that going on, this is and they're just Ecole beautiful. Case. That's right. That's the Montreal Cole. So you know that 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 new piece. Um, with that 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 moon phase disc, which actually they make it out of a venturine, and they you know it's full the the moon is actually loomed and everything like super 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 yeah. interesting. I haven't seen any pricing information on it yet, so I'm not sure where that's going to be. But if you haven't seen that one, definitely look it up. I don't it, it hasn't really it hasn't gotten a ton of coverage. No, but look look that one up if you haven't seen it, it yet. That does look really good. Yeah. Um, Jaeger brought back the duometer yeah. or the duometer or the duometer. Did it did it actually did it actually ever go away technically? That's a good question. I don't I'm know. Not sure, but it feels like it. It's, it's a feels like a resurgence. It does. It does. It has been born again from the ashes. You know what I? Um, you know what I noticed though is that it's thicker than this. The Turbion one, probably. No, all of them. Because I really? looked it up. Yeah, I can't remember. It's 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 only a you know a millimeter 
just under two millimeters thicker, but it's I was surprised, honestly. I mean, these, if you guys haven't seen one of these, go to the wrist cam real quick. I'm just going to show the movement because this movement on these watches, like, this is insane. Yeah. Uh, you get a really, really high level of finishing. And you have two barrels here, which you have to wind in both directions. So that winds one barrel and that winds the other one. Um, and so they, it, you're winding it in both directions this way. So in the case of this one, I believe this is a chronograph. No. This is the Quantium that, Lunaire. That, yeah, that's the one. Um, and so on the chronograph one, you have like one barrel for the chronograph and you have one barrel for the main timekeeping. I'm not sure how this one splits up. It's probably one barrel for the timekeeping and then one for like the Ratropont and the moon and the date would be my guess. Um, but that is a, uh, not a Ratropont, I'm sorry. That is a Fudrion. So that is one sixth of a second there as that is flying around in the bottom, um, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah. Pretty uh, cool. So, I mean, we've talked about the, the duometer line m many times now, and it's JLC in general, you wow, know, wow, wow. the watchmaker's watchmaker, it's super underrated as a brand, yeah. but then these kinds of pieces, the amount of watchmaking and technical excellence that you get in these pieces. Look um, at that. The case yeah. is very different. It's very, very different. I'm trying to find... This is this is a blog to watches coverage. So look at that. I mean, look at this. This is this is gorgeous. So they did this. There's I'm trying to find the the helio the perpetual helio turbion yeah. monster. Yeah. But look at that. I mean, that is that is an absolute stunner. Um, let me get to the dimensions because. Uh, so this is just focusing it, on that one. Yeah. Well, that's okay. So anyways, here here's the you know the basically the the lunaire. You know. That's exactly what we have, but. Right with but new yeah um so yeah so 14.2 millimeters thick is pretty hefty yeah at 42 and a half millimeters but it makes sense i mean you it's look a at lot that of movement you yeah. couldn't make it any go smaller ahead go back david um yeah that that is an incredible release they're going to be uber expensive yeah. but honestly like look for them on the secondary market in yeah. eight months or something and they're going to be you know at a, at a serious serious discount just an incredible incredible watch um, IWC released mm -hmm. an eternal calendar <laughs> with a moon phase that is accurate for 45 million years. I, think, I said, I how are they going to have to take their word for that? How are they going to make really that know. year window big enough to extend? And how many of those little extra discs will they give you? I'm going to, yeah, um, you know, got to call up Marty McFly and, uh, you know, pow, pow, <laughs> power up the time machine to, to check on the accuracy there. I, I appreciate anything for the sake of itself. You know, just like the thinnest watch for the sake of itself, the yeah. deep sea challenge sure. for the sake of itself, right? Because who's nobody? You can't buy for that. But I mean, that that survive, that watch so. is essentially a math problem more than it, more than like more than a watch. I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's as is the deep sea what challenge. It, 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 it as has, is anything. What any is it? It's these, it's it's the it's the gear train, the, the gearing that only advances once every four hundred years or something like that. It that's how they they yeah. do it and calculate it. Yeah. I don't know. It's completely pretty wild. ridiculous. It's cool. I appreciate it. They uh, revamped the Portuguese line. Which they is have some nice important. colors. Yeah. They have some nice styles. Um, I I'm moving quickly, not because I don't care, but because we have <laughs> two minutes left. Yeah. Um, Zenith put out a really cool looking diver. They did. They did. I, I don't love the bracelet, but I love the watch. I would take the watch and I put it on. I put cool it on a NATO or, for sure. A NATO or a rally strap or awesome. something cool like that. Um, and this and it's in this kind of like '70s Defy range, which I think is super duper cool. Um, Vacheron, Vacheron came out with the biggest pocket watch anybody's ever seen. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Nobody can buy it. But probably, they they always but... do that. They, they every couple of years they're good for. I mean, I remember, what was it? I think it was like seven or eight years ago where they came out with that piece that had the most complications of all time or whatever. Yeah. It was like 67 complications or something. Well, now really they've just one up gigantic. themselves with right. the same right. thing. And it's like, I again, I really appreciate a thing for the sake of itself. Yeah. But how many of those are they going to make? Well, and then... Right? Is it more than one? Because, like... But it I probably think it, took five years to make that one launch. It's part of their heritage, though, to do those kinds of crazy, you know uber complicated things just for the sake of do it's kind of like rolex doing you know uh the deep sea challenge just because they can right iwc well, yeah, doing the 45 million year thing just because they can right in 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 more like important and not important but in 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 more in uh, news that matters to you correct exactly they came out with the overseas line in yellow gold with some interesting Is it yellow or rose i actually don't I know it it's, it's in between it's it's a funky it in between rose. we'll look with those green dials so it's almost like a 
like a evergreen kind of color. It's not as vibrant as as some of the other green dials we've it's seen. It's like an olive. It's kind of olive. It yeah. looks really good. It looks excellent. Uh, it's it's. I mean, leave it to Vacheron to to hit the green train like a year or two pink too late. Gold. Interesting. Okay. So it is pink. I wonder, and it's funny. I wonder if it's the photography or if it's just the quality of the fact that when you put that dial with it, mm -hmm. it changes the color of the rose. I mean, I think it's gorgeous. It's honestly, it oh, looks it looks great. lovely. It looks really. It looks great. absolutely lovely. I much prefer it to the blue. Um, um, and it's sunray. It's not lacquer, which is kind of cool too. I actually um, like that it's sunray. You get yeah. It's more interesting. Yep. The only other release that I think we should talk about real quick is is Tudor. Um, Giving us a Black Bay 58 in in GM in GMT form. Are you translating that for us, Adam? Thank you. <laughs> um, so I love it. Um, so Tudor GMT, uh, Rob, if you want to just show off those two real quick. So they basically just took the the, the Black Bay 58 case um, right there, and ah. they and they gave us they gave us the GMT. And yep. I actually really like the way they the, the colorway that they did it in. You know, so it's, it's a coat. It's it's steel and it, right. right. And it's a Coke. I mean, it's it's, a Coke. it's There's black. your Coke. It's you got it's, it. It's, we got the Coke. Exactly. It's black. But, the but the red is not super bright. It's kind of, it reminds me of like a vintage 6542 or something where it's Sick. kind of like, it's faded and it's like yeah. a really interesting color. So, you know. this is the size. That's the size. At this thir is at the size. 38? Right? No, 39. Sorry. At 39 mil, like, that's perfect. Yes. And to give it, you know, to give us that, you know, in the in the GMT, like I love it. That that's great. That's what Tudor should be doing. It's like forty eight hundred dollars. You can get a, a the perfect size GMT, you know, for under five really k. That root beer is actually very good that's as well. I agree. Yeah, it's really good for yeah. for the price that these go for. But ima but, ima but imagine that quite a bit smaller. You know, yeah, more, that more wearable in so. this size case. Winner winner. Yeah. Check in dinner. Yeah. Um, cool. Go back to the main cam. So. Whatever, we just like rolled through, well, I don't know, probably way too many watches, way too quick. David, yes, what do you got? They just tagged you that Monaco release. They did a split chrono Monaco. I don't, I nobody nobody cool. cares. <laughs> <laughs> to our friend in Asia, thank you very much. Yeah, right, cheers. <laughs> um, but anyways, I don't know. Some lovely like, messages. We can't read them, e but we even, appreciate even though, you. Even though off the top, you know, we, we were all kind of meh about these releases. Like, we just spent an hour talking about some yeah. that we poo-pooed, and, and, but yeah. a bunch that we are actually pretty interesting that I'm yeah. excited to see in person. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. There's always, there's, always, there's always something good to say about. And we'll see stuff in the summer. We'll see stuff in the fall. Yeah. They're not done yet. So um, there's more good stuff coming, I'm there sure is. of it. There is. Thanks, all. Yeah. That was, was fun, fun, guys. Enjoyed it. Glad we were able to make this happen. Uh, sorry we, uh, we had, you had to wait two weeks, but um, we'll make sure we're back next week. Keep it coming with comments. Send us messages. Let us know what you guys want to talk about. Let us know what you think. And, yeah, we'll see you next week. Cheers. See you guys.